could go so many ways. Anyway, so when I realized today that I had two copies in time, I'm going to go ahead and get this started. I'm going to start being a little more official. So this is Wendy with To Be Revealed Spiritual Health. And we are talking about Mercury Retrograde and Taurus today. So who knows what Mercury Retrograde is? I couldn't define it as far as like the astrological part of it. I just know that every time Mercury goes into retrograde, there are computer problems or travel problems. And I've experienced both. Okay. Not this time, but other times. Okay. Do you have any preconceived notions? No. Okay. Only what you told me. <laughs> and I don't remember what I told you. So. I either, so, it's good. <laughs> so basically, Mercury on a, for most of the year, Mercury evolves revolves around the sun faster than the earth does and then for three periods out of the month out of the year it slows down to a pace slower than earth so it then evolves around the sun at a slower pace than earth does mm -hmm. so visually it looks like it's going backwards right so a lot of people confuse it with Mercury actually moving backwards when it's just moving slower, right? So if we're this and it's usually doing this, and then all of a sudden it's doing this, right? Okay. It looks like it's moving backwards, but it's not. It's just slower. Okay. And with that comes changes, <laughs> right? So approximately three times a year, for about three weeks, so th for three weeks total, it's moving slower than Earth. But then you have the pre-transition and the post-transition, and that's usually there's usually about one or two weeks on so either side really of the three really weeks. Long. So it actually feel it could feel like up to six weeks. Okay, that makes sense. But the bulk of it is three weeks, and then you have the teetering in and the teetering out. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what does Mercury rule? Like, what is it responsible for where we might see some issues? It is, it rules communication, news, travel, information, gossip, and technology, which is why we usually see hiccups and glitches and stuff mm -hmm. with our technology. But it also explains a lot of communication mishaps and misunderstandings during mm -hmm. those periods. When did this one start? The 21st last... on Friday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So that's why I'm saying it'll be interesting to see what, um, as I explain all of this, what you guys oh, yeah. now in reflection noticed over the last two weeks as it transitioned into place. Right. Yeah. Um, ever experience an abundance of relationship conflicts or gossip or anything like that during Mercury retrograde or during certain periods of the year where it just seems to like happen in bunches mm -hmm. and then you go to talk to somebody about it and kind of vent and somebody ends up mentioning Mercury retrograde somewhere and you're like, I don't know what that is, but I'm going to blame it on that. <laughs> Usually social media. Mm hmm Right. You'll also experience a lot of travel complications. Mm -hmm. You think that you made a reservation, but it didn't actually go through. Mm -hmm. Your flight got canceled or mm -hmm. scheduled. Something forgot traffic. to mention a baggage fee or something. Right. Mm -hmm. All those kind of little mishaps happen during Mercury retrograde. Stuck in traffic and you miss your flight altogether. Yep. So... With it being in Taurus, actually, we'll go back to the best practices. So generally in Mercury retrograde, the best practices, right, as Mercury slows down, we also kind of want to slow down. So we can stop and reflect on all these hiccups and these glitches and these mishaps and misunderstandings are happening. We really want to take a step back and focus on our communication. We don't wanna be the one doing the mishap, right? So 
really focusing on the communication, which is everything that we've been talking about all year long and resting and meditating, all those kind of things to make sure you're doing the self-care so you're not following falling into the chaos and the hecticness of the retrograde. Right. Also mm -hmm. a good idea to not take anything personal because people's reactions to you are not going to be their normal reaction. And your reactions to them? Would not, and, and your immediate reaction to them is not going to be your normal reaction outside of retrograde. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's why it's good to take a step back and think first, even triple check what we say right now or how we respond to people right now. It's also a good idea to not sign any contract or make any agreements during retrogrades. With the energy being off and out of balance and out of sync and it being a time for transformation and change, as we view those contracts and those agreements, we're not looking at them through the clearest lenses, right? So we don't want to lock ourselves into an agreement or lock ourselves into a contract. And then when retrograde ends and we transition back into an energy that's more in sync with ourselves, that contract or agreement may not have been the best choice and now we're stuck into one of those that doesn't suit us and we now have to manage that or deal with the consequences of that, right? So it's a good idea to not make any agreements or any contracts right now. It's also best to remain flexible, patient and understanding. Right, because so many things are out of sync, it's a good time to be really flexible because things are constantly gonna be changing or not going right or having delays or any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. So if being flexible is not your forte, like if you are a Taurus, or, which is the sign that we're in, they're not, it is not one of their best qualities Stubborn. or their strongest qualities. So that will be one of their biggest challenges, right? It's also a really good time to reflect on what's important to you, who you are, what you want and what you're doing, but don't make any plans. Right. If you're out of sync with the energies, you don't want to plan anything. But it's the best time because it's such a transformational stage. It's a really good time to reflect on all of those things. What's important to you. What you want your future to look like, all of those kind of things. Any feedback or conversation that you guys want to share on that one? Nope. Questions? No. No. Not really. I feel like this is me all the time. Not anymore. I could literally cry right now because my friend won't pick me up. So the energy that, 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 I could that we did. I'm going to hit her in the face right now. Try not to take any. You call me at one o'clock on a Sunday and say, Can you watch my baby at three o'clock? I always say yes. Run across the building and change my laundry for me. It takes less than five. But I'll have a coffee. Nicely. Yeah. <laughs> you just gotta not cry about it. <laughs> Get through the emotions first, Miss <laughs> Cancer. Oh. Process the emotions first. If I get through it. <laughs> so, what does it mean that it's in Taurus? What does Taurus represent? Right? Taurus is a lot about it's in conjunct with Venus a lot. So it's a lot about love and beauty and sensuality. 
touch is really important to them. What is um Taurus? Earth, air. It's fire. an earth sign. Earth I was sign. just about to okay. mention that. Oh, so they all like. So they okay. also like to be grounded, practical, stable because they are an earth sign, right? Conservative, realistic. They're going to be more into like um, nonfiction versus fiction, right? Give me something real versus giving me a story. Mm -hmm. Liking to stay grounded and stable. My mom is a Taurus. Mm -hmm. This the, is very much her. Yeah. They're also very determined and committed. And they have a really strong sense of sense of responsibility, which can be perceived as stubbornness by other signs. But it's just because those senses for them are really strong. Mm -hmm. Their views of the world are rooted in love, money, and wealth, which can make them overprotective, conservative, and materialistic. They also have a gift to provide a practical voice for reasoning during chaotic and unhealthy situations. So as we think about these characteristics in, in regards to Taurus, can you see which, can you see that these are amplified during Mercury retrograde? Mm -hmm. So whatever sign the retrograde is happening is, it's going to amplify that particular sign. So not every Mercury retrograde is going to be the same because no. it's always in a different right. sign. Okay. Right. So even though you're not that sign, that stuff still... It's you. going to affect you, and I'll talk about that. It's going to affect each sign differently because it's in Taurus. Taurus is going to have the strongest effect mm -hmm. because Mercury retrograde requires change and transformation and Taurus loves stability <laughs> and being grounded and right now they are not definitely not going to be any of those things yeah any questions as in regards to what Taurus represents mm -hmm. okay so as retrograde and Taurus energy is very slow you may feel like you're moving through the mud. You may feel like things are moving half at the normal speed. And then the next moment, things will be utterly erratic. Kind of like driving with the brakes on. And then the next moment is pedal to the metal. So it's going to be a bit unbalanced, this one. And since it's conjunct with Uranus, the planet of technology, where we would normally see a level of technology uh, chaos, it's going to be amplified during this one. And I will tell you that has absolutely been the truth for the last week for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I was almost starting to get scared. I had to replace my laptop and I really don't want to do that right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my cousin who's an IT guy is like, start making a journal, a whole laptop journal when it goes dark. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I did. And ever since I started the journal, it has stopped. And then it went to my phone and I'd, plug in my phone so that the map shows up on my little navigation screen. Mm -hmm. And about every five seconds, it would turn off the navigation screen, oh. like it like my phone wasn't plugged in, uh -huh. and it would go back to my phone. And then the next five seconds, it would show back up on the navigation screen. Oh, maddening. And I'm just like, okay. Uh -oh. So my little phone holder is on, it's because my screen is really big and it's over here. I wouldn't be able to reach the phone if I put my phone holder up here. So I put it over here. So that means the cord that plugs my phone into my car is going across my windshield, across my steering wheel, which is oh. totally not safe. No. <laughs> but it's the only way I could actually get the map to stay consistent. 
And I had I don't know my way around here again, so I didn't have a choice but to use my map. Oh my, <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna set I'm glad it's Saturday and I've already done working and out for a hike, so like I don't have any obligations yeah. right now, but this is okay. Hey Mercury, I'm just gonna stop and breathe and like not get frustrated. Right. Um, because this one is also near eclipse season, it will be highly transformational, even more so than usual. So expect a lot of change. Taurus has a high regard for money and wealth. Expect to take a closer look at your financial situations or your budget. Um, you're going to tend to be more conscientious or mindful of your return on your investments. Uh, you're going to be more financially conscious. There's going to be a tendency to either go over budget or feel a need to cut back. Getting an idea of your limitations now will set you up for success once retrograde is over. And I can tell you, I that has been like number one for me. Which is like, oh my God, I've been spending so much money over the last year and I'm still not making enough money to cover my bills. And where can I cut back? And then, oh, now I got to go to the dentist. And now I got, and so like, I'm like super conscientious of my money spending right now. No, I have four banks. And that was my way of avoiding that. Avoiding what? Like overspending and stuff. You have four different banks uh -huh. or four different bank accounts? I have nine bank accounts and four banks. So I have one bank account for just groceries, one bank account just for like miscellaneous, one bank account just for rent, one bank account for bills. So then I budget it all separately. So like each paycheck and all that goes. So that would drive me insane, but well, I'm like, glad it works for you. My like savings, I don't even look at it, so then I never take out of it because I like pretend that it's not there. So I need like, an app for that thing that I like. And that's the best way to do it. Yeah, that's yeah. very smart. And then I hide like the accounts that I save. You also have a, a regular paycheck. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So things are yeah. a little different. <laughs> yeah. When I was when I had a regular paycheck, I pretty much yeah did that. Yeah. So you said you've been spending a lot of money lately. Yeah, but I'm I'm a good deal shopper. Right. But you've been feeling the urge to shop. Oh, for sure. <laughs> what can I buy? What can I get? Da, da, da. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I literally and, just bought new towels at Costco. Nice. I don't need towels. <laughs> you don't need them, but you felt like buying them. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I got some butt wipes. I don't need those. <laughs> Especially not a Costco size one. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> if they dry out, you can just put a little more water yeah. in and moisten them. Wet them up. <laughs> and Kathy, you said you were oh experiencing Amazon. <laughs> oh my god! So Saturday we had lunch with the family for my brother-in-law's birthday, and my sister is like amazing at shopping and finding cool things that I just love. And mm -hmm. I always tell her next time, just buy two and I'll buy one off of you. Well, she buys a consignment shop, so there is no two. So she had this great purse and I'm like, oh, I need a new purse. I did not need a new purse. <laughs> <laughs> I did not need a new purse, but I bought myself a new purse on it's Amazon. At, yeah, it's it's her fault. And then the weekend. Yeah, it's her fault. That, it's not retrograde. <laughs> right. It's not retrograde. No, no, we'll blame it on my sister. Okay. She'll, she'll take it too. Okay. She'll be like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um. And then the, was it the weekend before that? When you were going to have the um, game night. Mm -hmm. So I was up in um, Loveland with a couple of friends of mine, knitting friends, and we went to a uh, yarn and fiber show. And yeah. needless to say, when I came home, I said to Mike, you're off the hook for my birthday this year. <laughs> He's like, I'm good with that. He didn't even ask. He just, yeah. <laughs> He knows better than to ask he knows at this point. Than to ask, yeah, he does, and you know, it, all he uh, he just wants to know the mortgage is paid and there's enough for some walking around cash for him. And 
there's groceries in the fridge. That's all he needs to know. Right. So yeah, that was special. So yeah. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong with me? Because I'm usually really good about that. And topping the sales. Mm -hmm. and, oh yeah. Don't it's not nice. ask me about the Amazon and the thrift books accounts. Don't. Yeah. We're not going to go there. <laughs> I so, almost had the credit card paid off again. And I'm like, what the hell did I just The worst thing so, is saved to your phone. <laughs> my credit card number is saved to my phone. And I just, yeah. Well, for me, I it's need. Amazon and the thrift books. Yes. And, and then there's PayPal if I'm somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> was, and I'm always so good about that. I We just put 1300 bucks into the car, getting it fixed because it's getting older. And I'm like, oh, great. I'm going to get this paid off. And no, right <laughs> Not that high, but still, is like yeah. So, okay. So you guys are experiencing one end of the spectrum, oh, where okay. I'm experiencing the other yeah. one, where I feel like I need to like seriously cut back and like yeah. almost cut up my credit cards. Yeah, yeah. And I've also seen the technology part. Like everyone on my team at work has had computer problems, and the computer for my backup camera in the car, like I just get a blank screen right now and. On the before all kinds of stuff like that, just little shit. That's as I was like, prepping for tonight, I went to hit print, and it acted like it printed. Didn't give me any troubleshoot errors or offline errors or anything. So I thought it was done. So when I went to go leave, I went to go grab the papers, and they haven't printed. So I got to run troubleshoot, and there's no errors, but it's also not going straight into printing. So I had to cancel the queue, mm -hmm. so and then I went back in to print it again. And it acted like it went to go print. And then I opened up the queue and there was nothing in the queue. And it still didn't print the second time? No, because it didn't even show up in the queue. Oh. I feel like that printer is just cursed in general because you never can get it. Right. Work. But also my screen, like my computer, I'll be watching a webinar and the whole thing will just go black for five seconds and then pop back up. And then the last time it did that, it went black for so long that the whole computer shut itself down. Oh. And had to restart. How old is your laptop now? Well, that's what started to freak me out because it is seven years old. Yeah. That's about what mine is too. Also, mine like, oh, that stuff happens. I've, I've got to get this. I've well, I have stuff on here that I can't afford to just throw it off the balcony. <laughs> yeah, right. He's so angry. But that's also why I save everything to the cloud too. But there's exactly. still stuff on here yeah. that's not yes. on the cloud that I can't lose. You have um, a thumb drive or something too with some some of that stuff back up. I have all kinds of thumb drives, but you know, I don't know what's on it. And like whatever's on it is seven years old. You can also get an external hard drive that you just plug in. And that's what it's I like have. It's like a giant thumb drive. Yeah. It's yeah. about okay. this big. Okay. That's good. what so, I have. It's like one terabyte or okay. like some ungodly amount that but I'll never build. Make sure you're up dating that back up yeah I, I might do that this week because <laughs> that is one of the well, that's one of the things that they recommend yeah. is to back up any really important documentation yeah. like you got it with you we could start it now, yeah, right? let's do it now. exactly exactly i will do it tomorrow because it's not going to happen today <laughs> yeah. it's just not gonna my day did not go as planned and i didn't do my ancestral healing that I was supposed to do yesterday so I need to do it tonight and that's the other thing that's really high right now is intuition so your intuitive skills are going to be heightened which is why my guides are telling me I have ancestral healing to do tonight they wanted me to do it yesterday but I ended up staying on my date for five hours uh -huh. They could, yeah. they could wait. I need you to tell me all about that. I will when the recording's done. It's only, it's it's only like it hasn't even been 30 minutes. <laughs> We're going to leave right at 7 tonight. So. Oh, okay. Well, we might go get through the rest of this pretty quick. Um, the fixed signs, Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, and Aquarius are going to be hit the hardest. Mercury will challenge them to see new perspectives and change their mind, which they don't love doing. So with these signs appreciating, appreciating stability and being grounded, this will be especially difficult. 
Pisces, Cancer, Capricorn, and Virgo will experience the best benefit as retrograde will get them to think outside the box and come up with new creative solutions. Heck yeah. Yes. Okay. So cancer specifically may leave you feeling like leaving the party, even though you just arrived. If you're on the outs with your click, it may be time to communicate and get down to what went wrong. What went wrong? <laughs> Sorry. That's all I heard. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it speaks to the process of reconnecting what you've lost touch with. <laughs> no, I'm telling Sorry. you, like my community, I, it's okay. <laughs> Be prepared to learn about what makes a team work together. You may spend time rethinking your vision for the future and what you want it to look like with a spotlight on your hopes and dreams. A more positive and healthy attitude towards your peers while you feel confident in the space you in the space you and those you've outgrown. You've created space for new and better friendships. So by creating space between people that you've outgrown, you're creating space to allow more friendships to come in. And with everything that we've talked about in the last year, do you see how that applies to me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> For sure, yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. Right? Yeah, and I'm totally rethinking what my future looks like. Yeah, like vision for it too. <clears throat> mm -hmm. like and so, right, so I'm, doing this whole website conversion and the way I thought it was going to look, I found out today is not how it's actually going to work. And that the software that I'm using for my clients, I was hoping to get rid of and run everything through this. I have to keep both. Dang. Oh yeah. Bummer. Yeah. So I'm not either that, or I can get rid of this one and do a lot of the stuff that that does manually myself, mm. which is not what I want. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And it's interesting because of this book, my spirit guides asked me to ask my mom for help in giving me stories, mm. right? So that created a space. It put the ball in her court to find the stories and to be able to talk about it from her perspective, <clears throat> which made her open up, right? And it feel, made her feel safe enough to open up that it created a much broader and intimate conversation between mother daughter and brought up some other things. So that was very healing more for her than it was for me. And then I asked my sister for help and that created a whole nother dialogue between me and my sister, which we normally only talk like two or three times a year. And we've already doubled that so far this year. In fact, we just had a conversation yesterday for over an hour on my book. Cause I asked, I want, I also wanted, I asked her for stories and she's like, well, I don't have any stories. I just chopped it off to your opinion and let it go. I was like, well, thank God you're a Leo. <laughs> thank God you did that. <laughs> it made both of us a lot happier. But then I asked her to see how she would apply the 70-20-10 as a teacher, right? So I'm kind of applying it to my classes, but I wanted to see how she would apply it to her classes, especially since like mine are for my own business and it's public, Right. But her, she's in a public middle school, mm -hmm. right? So her audience is different. Mm -hmm. It's a required thing, not a choice to attend, right? So that created a whole nother conversation. And then somehow we got, oh, I told her I had to leave for a date. And she's like, so what are your dating requirements? She's like, I found that so interesting. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, that's gonna have to be a whole nother conversation. <laughs> And I was like, okay, so we're actually like 
making plans for another conversation and we already made the plan for what the topic's gonna be. So reconnecting mm -hmm. with other people and like resolving some stuff. I even, there was the guy that I got pregnant from, I wanted his permission to put some of that in the book before it's published. Like it's already written, but I want his <laughs> put it well, in the yeah. book. And I think he should know that it's going to be in the book just in case any of his family members end up reading it or his girlfriend or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so we had that conversation last night. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I will never tell you no. He's like, you can go ahead and put it in there. I'm like, it doesn't have any names. It doesn't have any timelines. Like nobody's going to know it's you. And he's like, cool. He's like, but I would like a chance to read it. I'd like to know what it says. And then that opened up a whole channel for him to be like, you know, this is how I felt and this is how I perceived it. And I felt like I was kind of being an asshole about it. And then I felt really bad that I thought you wanted a kid and this was the only opportunity you were going to have. And then you lost it. So I felt really bad that you kind of got teased with this thing that you wanted. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of healing around that because I was like, <laughs> I'm happy it happened. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm so happy I don't have a kid. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'm like, I honestly never really wanted one. I was like, for I think it's like some sort of maternal thing that once you get married after a couple of years, it was just natural to like want to have a kid, even though we made an agreement that we didn't want to have kids. Yeah. And I even tried to get my tubes tied. And he's like, oh, I'm like, so you can just go ahead and release that stuff. Like, yeah. And he's like, well, this conversation is going to help with that. And I'm like, good. So like for the last seven years, he's been holding on to these things, these preconceived notions that he thought and I he wanted. Asked or talk to you. Right. <laughs> right. But there was a lot of other things going yeah. on. Right. And then, so anyways, it just created a whole healing conversation, which is what this whole retro, what retrograde ends up bringing up. <clears throat> All right, Libra. Oh, before I go into that, do you see how any of this plays out for you? Uh, or how yeah. it's already been brought forward? Kind of. I'm a little bit. Well, you created space stuff. with Marty and some of yeah. those people. And you came in here and you're making new friends in here. Yeah. And then, like, kind of just with, like, the family stuff that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Just, like, really making it my own. Instead of feeling like I have to fit into values and crap like that. Good for you. <laughs> like, just give me your money. <laughs> and have you felt more like you want to hang out at home versus going out yeah. mm -hmm. or even when you don't I'll go out you're just you like know. when can i leave yeah because you talked about that a couple weeks ago when you went out you were just like eh. by yeah. the time i got there i just wanted to go home i just haven't even been agreeing to anything like to go anywhere good like my sister's coming tomorrow and i'm like tell me what we're doing we're not making plans you figure out what you want to do while you're here so right I live here right so the other the other thing that i started doing this weekend was starting to um, plan my niece's trip high school graduation trip right so planning or not really planning but like getting inspired for what i want the future to look like things that we want to get creative about, right? If I'm in a very creative space right now, now would be a good time to like get her inspired and start throwing out some ideas. Almost like an outline of what you want. Mm -hmm. Without actually planning, yeah. right? Like starting to look at prices of things so I know how to budget, right? All of that is really healthy to do right now mm -hmm. if I'm being financially conscious, extra financially conscious, right? Mm -hmm. Libra, right? That's you. That's me. K. 
Okay, in the mood to settle debts and evaluate your return on investments. May experience some financial conundrums. Well, there's no conundrum. I just whipped that credit card out. <laughs> if money is unaccounted for, it's time to locate it. In that person. <laughs> Maybe less to do with money and more to be. That yarn show. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe less to do with money and more to do with letting go and moving on. That is definitely a theme the last couple of weeks. <clears throat> I have been taking more stuff to Goodwill and like just get rid of this. More stuff going in the trash. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Have you stayed in a situation way past its expiration date? Maybe it's time to make peace and set yourself free. And it may not be like an interpersonal relationship, right? Like over the last couple of months, you've been wanting to be a wild woman, try new things. Maybe it's time to break a certain relationship with yourself so that you can be that wild woman. Yeah. And experience new things. I think, yeah, that's to break free, letting go for sure. Yeah. A little bit more. Yeah. Right? Yep. This experience may occur at the same time your major emotional shifts in relationships. You'll be ready to set fire to what no longer has a hold on you. Although I wrote fold. <laughs> and move on. Yeah, that all fits mm -hmm. for sure. Right. So this is going to be a little bit more amplified over the next mm -hmm. few weeks. Okay. So Capricorn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it may be complicated and confusing, but it could be very interesting and enticing. Could lower the heat in your current relationship and leave you feeling artistically stifled. But it could also give you a chance to reconnect and find something you've been missing. It could encourage you to pick up a creative project you've abandoned. You may feel more creative juices returning and you may feel in the mood to start crushing on someone or prepare to enhance the romance. There's plenty of beautiful experiences here for them. I have to show them that when I get home. <laughs> 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 All right. Any other ones you guys want to look at? My sister's a Libra, so. Oh, so we already talked about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we could look at Taurus, since we're in Taurus. For Tauruses, it could lead to a total reevaluation of self. More so in your people-pleasing mode than your someone-needs-me mode. Focus on the person you've always been. You may feel like a more honest version of yourself. And don't be afraid to internalize during retrograde. You may feel less inclined to express yourself and more in the mood to just have a conversation. I don't need something to make me more into my people pleasing mode. No, that's just for Taurus people. Oh, okay, cool. I only talked about it because we're kind of in Taurus. So I don't get any Taurus attributes or whatever. That was being nurtured with the Well, habits. we already talked about that. Your spending habits. Yeah, but I want to get other things from them. Well, you might, depending on how it affects you. Mm -hmm. right so the process of reconnecting with other people or having some open conversations to uh, release some stuff that either they're holding on to or that you're holding on to right so for me I've been called to create conversation. And by creating that conversation, it's releasing stuff for the other people. So you, I don't know if you're experiencing any of that. Okay, well, it's only been a few days. 
Yeah. <laughs> we still have three weeks to go. Right? You might um, feel more confident. I know that you've been changing, working on some of the stuff that we've talked about over the past couple months. Maybe you'll feel more positivity and healthy attitude towards your peers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this is all Taurus aspects, right? Relationships, yeah. money. Anything else you guys want to share or talk about in regards to this? <laughs> Kathy? Oh, there's a lot to, to do on here. And it'll yes. be real interesting at the end of the retrograde to go back and read this again. Right. So yeah. some of these are going to come in phases, right? Yeah, so sure. yeah. like the first half of the description is what you're going to get in the first half of retrograde. And then the second half of the description will likely come in the second half of retrograde. So in the next week and okay. a half, you're going to start experiencing the second half of that. Oh, okay. That makes sense. You may not see it yet, but as, right, so the yeah. beginning of the description is the beginning of the retrograde. And then as the description goes, the farther we are into the retrograde. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Good to have a heads up. It is so important to have a heads up on these, right? That way, yeah. because I always look at it and plan them. And I actually have all the retrogrades for 23 in my phone, on my calendar. Yeah. And so like a couple months before, I'll start reading into it and be like, okay, so. This is what I've got coming up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is what to expect soon. And then that way I can kind of bring it in with my conversations with my clients. Right. That makes total sense. So I think the next one. Not till fall, I think. August 23rd. So it's going to be in Libra. Oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. August 23rd to September 14th. Oh, no, that's not Libra. That's uh, Virgo. Libra starts at the end of September. I always get those two mixed up. I don't know why. Okay, yeah. so it's in Virgo. It's in Virgo. Let What's me do it. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Let me just edit that real quick before I forget. Okay. So there's usually three a year unless there's like a portion of one that goes into it. Right, unless there's one in December that falls into January, then they consider that four. That makes sense. All right, then I will go ahead and stop.